So this is it people, this is the Schofield 6 inch Aging Black Revolver by ASG but actually made by Wingun. Let's get it open. Okay. First thing we are greeted with is your instruction manual. Yeah, decent, decent, decent. And that's how the packaging looks on the inside. Pretty decent. Let's get it out. Ho oh, oh. ho! Would you put your eyeballs around this? Oh my gosh! Loving that weathered, battle-worn look. Now, those of you who are familiar with the uh, Schofield in the non-real version world, you know that these also come in the air gun category too. But this bad boy, airsoft. Of course it is. Although those of you that really know me, you will know I was into air guns, air rifles, all of that shiz before I ever got into airsoft. But then someone introduced me to the wonderful world of airsoft and I kind of put the air rifles to one side. But I still love them. And here we are today with this beautiful looking ASG branded wing gun Schofield 6 inch airsoft revolver. Let's take a look around this beautiful piece and it's a revolver unlike anything else I have in my collection and I'll show you why in a moment. So first thing is first you've got this rather beautiful faux wood. I just wish it was real wood but hey ho and right there you have your ASG branding and then right there, look, I love it. It's got 1877. And by the way, this entire thing is metal apart from your faux wood grips. And here you have your unique serial number and you do have your Schofield on the barrel. Nice. Now notice your trigger, how far back it's sitting within the trigger guard. This bad boy is single action. It's not double action. So to fire this, you do have to cock that hammer. And it just reminds me of the old cowboys, how they used to fire their revolvers. So literally, let me just take the opportunity to show you right here. You have your safety and your fire switch. So right now it's in safe. If I pull it back, it's now in fire mode. Now check this. If I pull that trigger, nothing happens. But if I pull the hammer back, notice the cylinder has turned. I can now fire. There's no CO2 in there. There's no rounds in there. So it's all good. It fires. For me to fire again, I can't just do that. I've got to, again, hammer back and fire. Now you might be thinking, oh my gosh, that's long. Well, no, especially for you reenactors, this is so authentic and really does replicate the real deal. The only difference between this and its real counterpart is that this takes CO2 and it only fires plastic six millimeter BBs. Oh, and of course, the real one didn't have that airsoft safety switch. <laughs> Now, did I say those were the only features that separated this revolver from my other airsoft revolvers and blank firers and uh, air gun revolvers? Hell no! This is what really separates this bad boy. It's a top break. Meaning, unlike the more familiar way of loading or unloading your cylinder type revolver, check this out. Oh, not only is that super cool, I'm loving the fact that it has an extractor that does that. <laughs> and that's not all. Watch. You fired all your shots during gameplay and you want to quickly load it up again instead of taking these out one by one. Oh, yeah. Now, where have they gone? That's the only problem. You could probably lose them. But seriously, how cool is that? <laughs> right, get these bad boys back in and again. I've said this before in other uh, Airsoft Revolver reviews. How satisfying is it putting them in again one by one? 
Oh, and by the way, they don't always have to be flying out like that. As I showed you earlier, you can do it nice, calmly, and collectively. <laughs> And if for some reason you just want to open it up again and just check something and don't necessarily want your extractor to extract, you can just press on that right there and watch. It doesn't extract. Come on! By the way, when I did that spinny thing, it was on safe. <laughs> right, so if I continue to show you this beauty up close and personal, you can see a nice gripped section right there on the hammer. There's your rear sight. How epic does that look? <laughs> and then you've got that sort of long groove all the way down there. And there's your front sight. There's the business end, and for you movie makers, clever positioning will make this look very authentic. Okay, so looking at the base on the grip, you can see where you would gain access to insert your CO2, and what you would need to turn to pierce said CO2 capsule. And the tool to turn it is built in the grip, so that's pretty cool, you need no extras. I'll show you that in a moment when I get it ready for the uh, shooting test and the, uh, yeah, accuracy, chrono. Although, um, I must admit, I'm not expecting anything spectacular from this in terms of accuracy. And I don't really care. Um, it doesn't have hop-up, but who cares? It's an awesome Schofield replica. Now, in terms of the markings, yeah, love it, love it. Love it, but. <laughs> and then we get to this side where, yep, everything about this side screams airsoft. Because <laughs> right there you've got caliber 6mm BB made in Taiwan. And you've also got this unsightly sticker, but hey, that can be dealt with. Nice. Right, let's get this ready. Now, as you can see there, it's as simple as popping in a single BB into each one. Then you grab your Schofield revolver, open it up, and right there you can see where the CO2 would go. Now, if your CO2 doesn't already have silicon oil in it, just pop a little bit right there on the top. And an alternative way of introducing a little bit of silicon oil into the mix is instead of putting it on the capsule itself, you can pop a little bit just there where the CO2 would be pierced. Now, if that isn't already loose, you just get your grip. And as I mentioned before, look, it's got the little tool built in. You just slot it in there like that. Loosen it a bit just to give your uh, CO2 capsule some room to get in pop your CO2 in, then grab this again, and you wanna tighten it up, put the grip back on, <laughs> getting excited. The reason why I'm getting excited is because you do know that this bad boy is extremely powerful and not suitable for gameplay, even though I was mentioning gameplay earlier, which is cool because you can get gameplay down powered, or should I say, power down shells which will shoot at a more acceptable FPS. But this bad boy, out of the box, with these, shoots at about 400 plus FPS. <laughs> Can't wait. Right, let's see what sort of crazy readings we're gonna get on this. Four, seven, eight. Four seven three point nine. Let's call that four seven four. Do you know what? There's no point in going any further. It's quite clear this is not suitable for gameplay. If you're gonna do like I don't know, plinking around, target shooting, shooting at cans and stuff like that, perfect. But for gameplay, you need to get hold of those power down shells. Okay, let's do this.
my gosh, I wasn't expecting that. Not shabby at all. Even though there is no way to finally adjust the sights or any hop, that's pretty decent. And look, I almost got a perfect on that one. That is blooming awesome, I'm telling you. Oh, I don't know. Can I? Can I? Perfect. <laughs> How awesome is this piece? And another cool thing, just in case you didn't pick up on it, when you do do that break, you see your extractor sticks up and that will kind of be in the way if you're gonna put your cartridges in because they really do look like real cartridges, <laughs> but they're not. If you fold it all the way, your extractor disappears. Nice! And then, you can do your thing. Now, if you're going to be using this in gameplay, once you've got your lower powered shells, keep in mind that every time you do this, that's wear and tear. So if you want to be overly cautious, you can always triple nice. So yeah, my initial thoughts, absolutely awesome as a collector's piece, absolutely awesome for, you know, targeting, uh, you know, plinking around, shooting at cans, all that sort of fun stuff. But for gameplay, maybe this is gonna to be too much. Maybe cocking the hammer after every single shot is gonna to be too much, but it could be a themed gameplay. It could be a Western theme, yeah? So where all of you have to do the same thing, so you're all on a level footing. And then again, for you reenactors, Awesome, you don't actually have to put any BBs in there if you don't want to. Although I'm not sure if dry firing does it any good. But hey, this is the ASG branded, wing gun manufactured, Schofield 6mm Airsoft Revolver. Ah, I see what Hickok 45 was saying now. Awesome. No, I'm not trying to say this is just like the real one in terms of what it does, but still, just the look, the feel of it, the weight, everything, the way it functions, absolutely a beautiful Smith and Wesson design. <laughs> I feel like I want more content. I want to watch more videos about this Schofield. Now, I've watched all of the Hickok 45 videos on the real version, but I want to watch more Airsoft uh, videos on this particular model. Now, who could I watch? What, I was flicking through some videos the other day. Ah, ages ago, Tim. Yeah, you remember Tim. He used to be with that wolf that was red. Yeah, he did a video on one of these. It was a different brand though, but the same thing. And uh, who else? Rune Rebel. Yes, I'll watch his. And who else? Ah, Thin Brown Line. Right, I'm off. Catch you later. I'm gonna watch some more videos. <laughs>